good morning. Today is the 25th of May, and uh, this is the Enfield pageant of motoring. You are entering part one of the slightly shambolic shuffle around this event. I'm afraid the filming is terrible. There is wind noise. Um, I might fall over, and I'll probably get things wrong, and it's just the way it goes in this channel, so stop watching now. Okay, those of you who are still here, we will start off in this stand. It's marked A1, so it's obviously a good place to start. This is the um, Jaguar Drivers Club for Area 57 Venfield. I don't know if I'm supposed to be wandering in and out of the stand. I mean, I can do. Got a um, Series 2E type here. You can tell what it seems the Series 2 and the Series 1 straight away. You can see the indicators are different at the front and the grill's a lot larger on the Series 2. That one's on a G plate, so 68, 69. This one is a, a Series 1, it'll be a 4.2, 2 plus 2, 66. And then we've got another um, Series 2 here with some white wall tyres. That is um, 69 to 70 registration. So Come to register, this might have been registered by Jaguar themselves. Replica task just there from May 1970. Ooh, that's pretty good. Third car in, and we've got a nice beige leather interior with a wooden steering wheel. Would have to be a Jaguar, wouldn't it? We'll survive you with such entertainment. Uh, apologies for the vibration there, viewers. I do have a ready unit with this thing turned off. Um, yeah, very nice. Dark green as well. There's that uh, Series 1, um, 4.22 plus 2. I've driven one of these, actually, years ago. And there's the back of this... Uh, other Series 2 here, 68, 69. More recycle action over here, another Series 2. Let's have a look and see the length of the door. Now this, I don't think, is a 2 plus 2, no, not a 2 plus 2, it's a standard one. With a, a nice, um, sort of, like a Tudor Webasta sunroof or something like that. Excellent. And then the next time, we're going to be careful about this one, viewers. <laughs> Particularly as when we actually inside the ultra low emission zone and <laughs> nope can't talk about that thank you mayor of london for placing this event inside the ultra low emission zone um then an early xjs this one it, it's the plates are actually earlier than the car but this is probably from the late 70s or early 80s this one is it in he no it's a pre-he that's a very old one then it's like sort of sort of return of the saints or new avengers spec actually that one Interesting steering wheel though. And then we've got some sort of older ones over here. This looks to me like um, SK120 or something like that. Unfortunately, I have got announcements in the background and there's nothing I can do about it. It's just the way that it is. Um, yeah, that I think is an SK120. Just says uh, Jaguar Cars delivers a commentary on it. Oh, it's an information sheet actually. I should have referenced it, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, it is an XK120, I actually got it right, 1951, 3.4 litre XK engine. The XK120 was the first car to use the XK engine back in, I think, 1948 these came out. Then, later one here, this is a 150. Does somebody have an information sheet for me? No, not this time. Um, Oldish white, I think this name this colour is, with red interior, it's a classic combination. Unfortunately, the bunting is getting in the way of my filming. Um, it's always the way, isn't it? Things get in the way, and it's a terrible video. That's just the way that it goes. Ooh, very nice. 1965 Jaguar S-Type, 3.4 litre. Oh, yes, viewers, look at this. How much wood would you like? And a beige leather interior as well. It's a good start. I mean, not, I mean absolutely catastrophic start, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's still good. But that's very nice. Another XK150 here. This is a nice sand, isn't it, to start off with? Um, I feel I've seen this, did I see this like last week at um, the Chilton Hills Rally? Might have done. I mean, that is, um, that is rather nice. Also got a very nice um, Mark II here, 3.8 litre Mark II. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> with a beige leather interior <laughs> and some wood. This is a 67, it's a very, very late one. Around this sort of time, the Mark IIs were rebadged as 240 and 340, and the 3.8 was discontinued entirely in favour of the Jaguar 420, so it's a very late one. And we've got um, another 3.8 here. 
someone's put some later seats in this, probably a bit more comfortable than maybe a different gearbox in this one. Looks like an overdrive in this one. Don't know what year, it's been early, earlier one than the uh, other one we saw. And then a Daimler V8 250. This was uh, the last variant of this Mark II body shell to be made. They were discontinued in 1969 and this is a 68-69. Superb, right. Fantastic stand to start with. Next one. One of my favourite things about the Bromley pageant when it happened, obviously that has been postponed for the year due to the optical emission zone. Yeah, I'm not joking. That's the reason why it's not happening. Is uh, some Mark II Cortinas and specifically Mark II 300E Cortinas are always on a stand. And uh, well, they're here instead, which is great. Uh, we'll start off with this one. I'm assuming that this is a uh, original plate of the CAN51E, which means this is a 1967 car. First car Jeremy Clark something ever owned was one of these. I think his father had owned one as well. So um, by the time he came to pass the test around 1978, they would have been very cheap. This one is a late one. It's been 1970 only. It's got a nice sunroof as well. Superb. The condition of these of these cars are always on this stand. Whenever I whenever I see them, I think also they do come to Nebworth House show, which is in August. Um, it's always really, really good. Another 1970 car here. I really like this colour. I think this is superb. It's a beautiful colour and it's like a sort of black interior as well with a bit of wood on the dash. Because why not? It's 1970 and you know, this is the way that things go. And then uh, something to see here. This is a genuine Mark II Lotus Cortina police car. It's a four-door, which is unusual but um, yeah I've seen this before and it is a real one 6970 registration that's crazy I suppose it's the equivalent of um, you know these days they have quite fast cars like Audi S3s and things like that to keep up with the criminals again 6970 on an H another 1600 E Churchill's in the back looking um, looking happy there In um, 1980, they made an episode of the Professionals called Kickback, and um, they gave Norman Ashley, playing a character whose name I can't remember at the moment, I think it's Keller, a car identical to this. If you watch the episode, you'll see. Obviously, it wasn't in the right sort of condition, but pretty much identical to this particular car here, 6970 300E Cortina in this sort of gold. You can see we've got two shades of gold or bronze that were available at the time. This one is a 70. I don't know what I prefer, to be honest. I think because I'm a professionals fan, I prefer the gold car, but this bronzy car is nice as well. Um, I like both viewers. I mean, we're sort of sport for choice, aren't we? This is, this is quite amazing, really. We're just sort of working our way through the stands in the actual order that they're listed, which is unusual. Um, then a very nice BMW here, 71 to 72 on a K. I'll have a look at the back to see what model this is. I don't want to get that wrong. Oh, there we go. For sale, call Kelly on 07947567375. As Mr. Bill on the Fuel Pod channel says, this could be yours. Very rare car. It's original right-hand drive. Not the most luxurious specification. We haven't even got a rev counter in there. Um, it's just for 2000, which was a sort of standard saloon at the time. Obviously, there were smaller ones like the, the O2 series and things. But that is the uh, 2000. Oh, viewers, talking of professionals, what have we got here? Oh. A very, very nice Dolomite. Now, I'm going to be a little bit careful because if it's a sprint, it should have a full vinyl roof on it. Maybe someone's lost to delete it. Also, add some very, very nice beige seats, beige leather. That wouldn't have been actually standard on one of these. wouldn't have had a leather interior standard. But somebody has heard my appeal for a nice Dolomite sprint with a beige leather interior and it's been answered. That is a lovely car. White wall tyres, original alloy wheels. Um, the 1850 HLs would have just had this little... Um, Vinyl on the C pillar there. But it would have had a full, I don't know, but some sort of sunroof, which is probably not a bad idea. Um, it's quite an early one, 73, 74. Um, it's an automatic. You could get an automatic sprint. Obviously, the one in the professionals, which is a 1977, I think POK 79R, was a manual. It was uh, white. This is very unusual. 
Most of the Anglias that you see are actually deluxe ones with a full width grille, like a left hand car. This one, this estate is the standard type, it's got the, the um, smaller grille, it's quite rare. Most of the Anglias they sold were deluxes. So this is a quite a rare car anyway. I mean, the estates aren't very common, you know, in the first place, but to see one as a standard specification is amazing. Quite a late 1967. And then another 67 Anglia, this sort of standard shape. Um, with um, full sort of <laughs> Harry Potter colour scheme on it. Um, this is a couple of sportsmen, I imagine because of that sort of Continental kit on the back. I've never seen one like this before. But yeah, that is um, sort of classic as an Anglia sort of gets. It's just for 105 EV, 123 was for Super. And then uh, Reliant Scimitar. Now we, we <laughs> can't make the connection that everybody wants to make because it's the most boring thing ever when people say it. So I'm not allowed to say it, but we can talk about the car anyway. 73, 74, Scimitar GC, the lovely Essex V6 in it. Very, very nice condition that. That is actually all the cars so far have been really nice. The overdrive. Um, more modern Mercedes Benz, I think we'll skip over it to this V12 E type. 73, 74 on an M. Oh, and again, oh, oh. yes, a beige leather interior with a wooden steering wheel. This one's an automatic. The one I drove recently, one of these was 73 as well, was a manual. Um, I like the Series 3s actually. I mean, they don't maybe look as nice as the, um, the earlier E types, but they are really nice to drive. They're actually much easier than any other E type. Uh, they've got. Um, you know, power steering for a start and also can match gearbox and things like that, which aren't to give them on all these types. And then a Rover 110. Um, this is the final type of P4 they made alongside the 95. This will be between 1962 and 1964. The main difference between this and actually the other ones, apart from the engine and some styling bits, is the fact that the doors are steel rather than uh, Berber Bright, which actually would have been on the earlier cars. Riley 1.5, which is sort of similar to the Wall Street 300 and also the Morris Minor. It's quite a late one actually, but it discontinued the next year. This is the 64. And then a uh, strange kind of 2CV convertible thing. I don't think I've uh, actually seen one of these before. I'm not entirely sure what year that is. It's probably from the um, from 1980s, I would have thought. So stand A4, the Mark IV Zephyr and Zodiac Owners Club. Excellent. I wonder if we'll see any um, executives on this stand as well. So straight away we've got this incredibly unusual um, sort of camper conversion thing. Wow. I mean, I knew these were big old cars. They were known for being big in the day. I mean, look at the length of the bonnet, which is completely unnecessary to fit the engines in, but it, it does make the car look very, very American. And someone's put a camper thing on the back. Wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's crazy, views. That's really crazy. So, this is a Zodiac, 71, 72 on a K. Well, a, a very late one. The Granadas and uh, the consoles came out early 72. We've got everything on this. It's a manual with river rev counter. And here is the uh, V6 engine in there. As you can see, the spare wheel actually lives there because you don't actually need the length of um, the bonnet of the car to fit the engine in. You could put the engine there and put the spare wheel there. It just shows you kind of it all about styling rather than anything else. And then we have got an executive. Just check the back of this. And this is an executive, which is the one above the Zodiac, this is a much earlier one, this is a 1967 or 68 on an F, again you can see the uh, spare wheel there. By contrast, this is a, a much more basic car, this is a, uh, a Zephyr, I don't think this is a Zephyr 4, I think this is a, this is the Zephyr 6, but there was also a Zephyr 4 below this as well with a V4 engine, but you can see from the back end it's completely different and uh, you also See something um, that uh, is unusual with these cars, the fuel fill is right in the middle. It's a deluxe model. Another Zodiac here, 67, 68, with vinyl roof. Very, very sort of late 60s sort of interior. Very, very much so. Umbrella handbrake and all kinds of other things so you can, well, I suppose in some of them you can try to fit three people across the front. That car's got a bench seat in it, this one hasn't. And another Zodiac, 67. 
such sort of American looking cars, aren't they? I mean, they, they obviously have had a parent company over in Detroit, like everything else, but uh, yeah. I prefer the back end of the uh, Zodiac Executive to the standard one, personally, but uh, that's just me. One thing you mustn't do in one of these is crash it, because the bulkheads are quite weak, and you're not going to go come off very well. That's what the banger racers used to find when they used to use these, and they were banned from a lot of tracks for that reason. Right, let's move on to the next stand. Certainly not all the exhibits here are on stand. Some of them are just parked here, like this early Mark III Escort van, 1983-84 registration. That's immaculate, actually. How many of those do you see these days? And talking of escorts, another one here, 1300E. This would be a late Mark 1, it would be 1973-74. I think the 1300E only came out, I think, in late 73, early 74. But yeah, um, that's one of the few ones that hasn't been converted to something else. That's um, nice to see, actually. The A's Mini Club stand A5, appropriately. Um, I thought this was supposed to be a mini set. We've got a Morris 10 on here. Not like complaining or anything. I mean, uh, that's a lot rarer than, than minis <laughs> to see something like this. But yes, that's um, interesting. And then we've got um, some minis, of course, as promised. This one's had some earlier rear lights put on it from the early 70s. This one is actually an 1884-85 car. But, you know, we had a different dash, you've got two complete dashes in here or something. So every sort of space has been filled with instruments. Um, that is interesting. And then we've got a British Open Classic Mini here. So what year is this? It's a 1992. Right, don't touch it. Okay, I'm not going to touch it. I like the steering wheel on that. That is, um, that is quite nice. And then... Uh, 67, 68. I think this is a late Mark 1 actually, but with the doors, I could be wrong. But Mark 2s have different rear lights, so late Mark 1, Austin Mini Cooper S. That's a real one, that's a very valuable car. And then um, 1990, 1991 Mini, and then a uh, Mini 30 from 1989. This one's an automatic, actually. I don't think I've seen an automatic Mini 30 before, but obviously you could get them. And this one is a 1275 GT, 1970-71. These are becoming quite valuable now, particularly in this sort of condition. That's that's really nice, actually. Yeah, but it's uh, very nice indeed. Something that I wasn't expecting to see was... Um, a whole stand full of Ford Corsairs, and I don't think that's a Corsair in the back of there, but we'll go with this one next, because we're here. This is a Crayford um, converted Corsair, 1966. An early one with a V4 engine. I see a, probably a 1.5 GT, I think. Yeah, by Crayford, there we go. That's a rare car. Also rare is this... Um, I think this is a Sunbeam Alpine, it's a, it's a Tiger with the V8. Um, yeah, 1965. Quite a late course, this is a 2000E. Wow. That's in really, really nice condition. The Corsairs are quite undervalued in comparison to some of the other classic Fords for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, 6629 on G. See, these are actually starting to get the little Ford Oval badges on it um, in 1967. Another GT model, this one. With automatic transmission. Ooh, another 3000 these. Someone's dropped an SX V6 in that, similar to like a Cortina Savage, I think. And a um, Type 9 five-speed gearbox. 6970 with some towing mirrors on it for some another Corsair of the same here or here this maybe not 2000E no it's just a standard one it's just deluxe actually some kind of um, can't remember what these, uh, these Chevys are called now Silverado there we go that's uh, as far as my knowledge of American cars goes 
but a much earlier Corsair in 1964. They came out actually in 63, so this is an early one. This will have um, a similar engine in it to something like a Mark 1 Cortina. Yeah, not a V4 in there, but that's been modified a bit. Another two door here. This looks like a really early, it's a console Corsair, so yeah. We haven't even got a suffix plate on this. The um, suffix plates were introduced across all local authorities by 1965. They came out in 63, but um, not all local authorities adopted them until 65. 65 Corsair GT here, another two door. Very helpful someone to leave and open so we can have a look at the interior. Someone's put added a rev counter down there. I can't remember how these handle actually now. I forget what sort of suspension of things that they've got. Then another Crayford one here, 6768 on an F, it's a V4. I was betting this will also be a GT. Unusual colour, purple with black and purple interior. Um, no, just a deluxe. Okay. I was wrong, just like I am about so many things. Ooh. Very nice. Series 1 Jaguar XJ just casually parked over here. Mm, I wonder what specification this one is. It's a 4.2. I think that was the most common one, perhaps. And yes, you've got a nice beige leather interior with some wood. Oh, I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. This one is something else I like over there. Right, the thing that I spotted has uh, someone taking proper photographs of it, so we'll come over here. And this is a car that I actually filmed last year at um, the Nebworth House Classic Car Show. It's a 1986, from what I remember, Datsun 300C. I did a detailed walk around of this. Some point, some point, um, we'll have a go in this view. But these cars are really rare. There's like 20 left on the road or something. And then we've got a uh, Cedric, which would have been imported from Japan. I forget the uh, model code for these. I think we've seen this one before. That is a sort of 87, 88 on an E. Right, then we go to B7. I, I don't know if we've got any B7 Alpinas here, but um, we have a very nice V12 <laughs> 7 Series. <laughs> um, 2001 registration, that one. Uh, that does look rather nice. E38, I think these are. You have a 750 IL with 5.4 litre engine. Then um, 1989 to 90, E34 535i. Preface of one with the uh, different mirrors. This is a. Uh, a Z4. Now you're not allowed to have a car that's after uh, 1999 in here unless it's on a club stand, which of course this is. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, look at this. It's 635 CSI, I think this is. That is with some Alpina wheels. Now, that is extremely tasty. Oh, got a friend down there. Hello. Very, very nice. Some really really nice car i think these are discontinued about 1989 and that's sort of uh 88 89 on an f that's mm, very tasty so because we've got a club stand we can have a 2003 in here that's not a problem and this is um it's not an m3 or anything it's an e46 318 ci so that's the base model coupe they made uh, that one we can't talk about viewers, but we'll move on to this E46, sorry, E36 Touring, which um, I don't know what specification this is. Maybe looking by the engine, some of you can tell me. So that's uh, 96.97 on a P. It's got M3 mirrors on it, but I don't know if that's a genuine M3. I don't think it is, actually. Right, I wonder if I'm going to be allowed to, on this stand or if I have to stay away. Let's go around the other side and see what happens. Well, it's uh, after 12, there's still stuff coming in. I mean, 
mind you, if, you, if what your car you're coming in is, is a 1982 Ford Cortina Mark V gear, I mean, I'm very happy to see that indeed. Yeah, gear S, a bit, S pack on it. That was a genuine badge for those. But a nice 190E, two litre. That's quite a late one, actually. 91, 92. Yes, I think we can go on with a stand. Countryman, this one. Um, Austin, probably 1300, or it could be 1100, actually. Quite a late one. Yeah, it's a 1300 Countryman. This is a Mark III, 72, 73. That one's got the two tags on. So that one's got the two tags on. Yeah. This is um an earlier countryman. This is sort of like faulty towers spec, although it's red like the uh, other one. I think this is a. I think this is a late Mark One. This one, 1967, 1100. I've never seen so many of countrymen's together actually. It'd be, it'd be Morris ones are called the Traveller like this one. So this will be uh, 67. Morris 1100 Traveller, because there was also a Morris 1000 Traveller, which was the minor. Um, but they haven't got any fake wood on that one for some reason. So this is a Mark II, this one. 68-69 on G. So many variations of ADA 16s, so many. Um, yeah, that's just Mark II on the back. And then we've got 1300 GT 7172. I have driven one of these actually. I driven one last year, and it was um, it was a pretty amazing really. The gearbox was a bit funny on that, but um, yeah, it was pretty good. And we've got a Walsley, a bit more luxurious. I mean, I my preference is um, something like a Riley or a Vanden Pla. I don't wonder if we've got any of those here today. Let's see 1300. So that'll be an early Mark II. And talking of Rileys, a very, very late Riley one. 69 was the year they were discontinued. In fact, all Riley were discontinued in 69, and this is a 69. Um, yeah. A lot of people prefer the Rileys. I mean, I, I like the Vanden Plaza best, so the second best is Rileys. Very, very nice. If I had to have a Riley, it would probably be one of these. And um, another 1300 GT. I think this is the one that won an award at the uh, Beale Autumn Rally at Milton Keynes last year. I think this is the very car. It's absolutely beautiful. I think it's a 73, this one. It could be 72. Another 1300 GT. Gosh, they're breeding around here. Those Metro wheels off a, a, an early Mark 1 MG Metro or something. I imagine they fit. Um, yeah, look all right, actually. And we've got another 1300 GT. Never seen so many 1300 GTs together. Right, we we'll have to keep continuing with this um, annoying, annoying commentary. Um, yeah, 73. And then uh, Worsley 1300 in two tone, 1970-1971. Got some more wood, but no rev counter, unfortunately. Uh, rev counter, you'd be on a Riley or an MG. And we've got a police car. Tons of these were used by the police. This is a 72. Austin 1100, Metropolitan Police Panda Car. They did make the 1100, I think, almost until the end, but not all of them were the enlarged engine. This is uh, uh, two Wolseleys. <laughs> two of them. That is um, extraordinary. <laughs> um, yeah, Mark II, this 168 69. On a G with the uh, sunroof. I'm not sure it's legal to travel in the back of that trailer or not. Um, perhaps it is. August 68, that one. Right, I'm going to just uh, actually walk around that way. I find it hardest to tell the difference between um, Mark II and Mark III on the 300 GT out of all of them. Um, this is, yeah, this is a Mark II. 69 to 70. I can actually get back far enough to show it on camera. I told you the filming was terrible on this channel, viewers, um, because it is. It's not an exaggeration. Right, let's uh, go to the next stand. Right, that's it for part one. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we shall see you again in part two for some more incorrect information.